It turns out that magnesium is a really important mineral for your brain. As you know, magnesium is an enzymatic cofactor for over 350 reactions in the body. But it turns out, and as you can see from these different images from this recently published narrative review titled Neuroprotective Effects of Magnesium Implications for Neuroinflammation and Cognitive Decline, when one is deficient in magnesium, particularly in their brain, we see an activation of the NMDR receptor that can lead to neuroinflammation and oxidative stress, as well as activated micro, microglial cells within the brain. So this is figure one here, really important stuff because many people are deficient in magnesium. And we're gonna talk about some of the clinical implications and things that you should consider there. But I think this is really important because We've known for a long time that magnesium deficiency can also augment vitamin D deficiency. So it turns out that the uh, magnesium is a cofactor for various aspects of vitamin D metabolism and the vitamin D receptor. So the authors go on to say that magnesium deficiency results in reduced levels of 125 dihydroxy vitamin D levels and impaired parathyroid hormone responses and has been implicated in magnesium dependent vitamin D resistant rickets, for example. Magnesium acts as a cofactor for the vitamin D binding protein and the metabolism of vitamin D within the liver is dependent upon magnesium and this hydroxylation process from a pre-vitamin D into the 125 dihydroxy vitamin D is a magnesium dependent process. But that's not all. It turns out that vitamin D is also important in magnesium uptake in the stomach. This is really interesting. The authors go on to say that magnesium is an essential cofactor for vitamin D synthesis and activation in turn can increase the intestinal absorption of magnesium and establish a feed forward loop to maintain the homeostasis of both vitamin D and magnesium. So if you take magnesium, you should take vitamin D. And if you take vitamin D, you should probably consider magnesium as well. The authors say dysregulation in either of these nutrients can be associated with various disorders, including skeletal deformities, cardiovascular disorders, and metabolic syndrome. A core principle of osteopathic medicine relies on promoting the body's innate ability to heal itself. A better understanding of how magnesium supplementation might reduce complications related to vitamin D deficiency would help improve patient care. But we really care more about the brain because we know that the fourth leading cause of mortality in this country is in fact Alzheimer's disease and dementia. So we know that many people are suffering from mild cognitive impairment, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, cognitive decline and beyond and magnesium plays an important role in brain health. So before we go on and talk about this, I wanna thank this video show sponsor, the good folks over at MauiNuiVenison.com, the makers of the highest quality wild game meat on the planet. What I love about the Maui Nui Venison is the protein to calorie ratio is better than any other protein that's on the market. Researchers at Utah State University, Stephen Van Vallette, have actually been studying the polyphenolic composition of this meat, as well as the mitochondrial uh, components and the different uh, micronutrients and conditionally essential micronutrients like creatine, carnosine, and beyond. This meat is amazing. I think you really like it. But their venison stick also has liver, kidney, heart, and beyond, along with protein. So this tastes great. Your kids will actually love this. It's way better than any beef jerky you're gonna get at the grocery store. And it's a great way to sneak in some of these micronutrient-enriched organs, such as the heart, such as the liver, kidney, and spleen. So you can save by going to mauiinuivenison.com forward slash HIH, and I'll leave that in the description below. So getting back to magnesium, I think this is really impressive about how magnesium not only impacts vitamin D status, but affects brain health and might decrease neuroinflammatory processes within the brain. As we can see here from figure two, magnesium can actually increase the activity of anti-inflammatory mediators within different neuronal sites, as well as microglial cells within the brain. Magnesium actually improves synaptic plasticity. So we're thinking learning, memory, uh, cognitive function as well, and decreasing inflammatory signaling within the brain. It turns out the brain is really unique in that there can be a vicious cycle of chronic inflammation that once it starts to get going, it's like a snowball rolling downhill, collecting more and more inertia. That is the inflammatory process seems to beget more and more infl inflammation. And this is why sometimes you see people with a traumatic head injury 
They start to develop all sorts of symptoms and it can lead to atrophy and this chronic unregulated neuroinflammatory cascade that ultimately leads to cognitive dysfunction. But it turns out that magnesium can help interfere with that, which is great to help to maintain cognitive health and reduce the neuroinflammatory processes. Now, I think the thing to consider here is there's all sorts of different forms of magnesium. And this is why we see different efficacy when it comes to the different studies. Some studies will use magnesium sulfate, others will use magnesium citrate, some will use magnesium glycinate. The two forms that are good for the brain, it turns out, is magnesium acetylatorate and magnesium L3-inate. And I think that's important to consider when we're thinking about optimizing magnesium for the brain. Specifically, we want to look for those two different forms of magnesium. Because as you might see from this table, magnesium is not really found in common healthy foods. And I mentioned healthy foods because of course you can eat mung beans and black beans and butternut squash and peanuts, but most people are not gonna prepare those in a proper way by soaking and sprouting and slowly cooking them because we know that beans and legumes, lentils, have a lot of anti-nutrients that are unhealthy. So unless you're eating a lot of sprouted pumpkin seeds and pumpkin, you're not getting much magnesium. So this is where supplements can come in and I think can be a beneficial thing to consider. But it turns out that pumpkin is actually enriched in magnesium. And so I do recommend soaking and sprouting pumpkin seeds. That's a great way to get your magnesium uh, in your diet. Uh, we do know that almonds are actually a decent source of magnesium, but it, again, you have the downside of the oxalates found in the almonds. So if you can tolerate oxalates, if you don't have oxalate toxicity issues, if you've never had a kidney stone, then maybe you could increase your almond consumption. But again, the skin of the almonds has tannins, has anti-nutrients, and of course the oxalates are an issue. Um, if you do eat beans and other seeds and so forth, then make sure that you soak and sprout them. But for me, I would just rather rely upon a dietary supplement, uh, high quality, third-party tested, magnesium acetylatorate or a magnesium l 3 and 8 So you're not gonna find much magnesium uh, in meat, which is uh, quite interesting. But we also know that magnesium levels as well as zinc and other, uh, other minerals are actually lower uh, in the soil. Uh, this is, I think Baylor University has looked at the composition of minerals in the soil. Over the past 30 years, levels keep declining. And so therefore there's a commensurate reduction in the level of minerals in the actual foods that you're eating. So that's something to consider. But in brief, it turns out that we should really consider magnesium as, as an essential supplement to optimize vitamin D levels and also help support the brain. So if you wanna dive more into this amazing paper that was just published a few months ago, again, this was published in the journal Frontiers of Endocrinology. The title is Neuroprotective Effects of Magnesium Implications for Neuroinflammation and Cognitive Decline. So what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. What have you noticed since you started to optimize your magnesium levels? The poorest forms of magnesium, in my opinion, are gonna be magnesium citrate and magnesium oxide, followed by magnesium sulfate. You wanna focus on things like magnesium glycinate, magnesium malate for the body systemically, or for the brain, magnesium acetylatorate or magnesium L3 and 8. So let me know what you think, and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.